Hello, my name is Jacob, and I'm a Norse pagan, and today I'm here to talk about By Odin's Beard, a Crow! Odin, send me your sign! What do you have for me? Odin! Sorry about that. You know how it is. You see a sign from the gods, and you just gotta chase after it. So let me try this one more time. Hello, my name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And by Frere's foulus, another crow! Okay, for real this time, I really just wanted to have fun in the beginning of this episode because over the last couple of years of operating the wisdom of Odin, I think the number one most asked question I get still to this day is about signs from the gods. And really, I think it's people asking me if I think something truly is a sign from the gods. Um, and so I, I really do think that in the beginning, it can be really confusing to, to tell what is and is not a sign. We tend to look at every single bird and think, oh my gosh, it's a sign from Odin. Um, so I really just wanted to do that funny bit in the beginning to kind of show Show that yes when you first start this path it is hard to tell what is actually a sign and you really can't look at every single bird you see as a sign from the gods i mean i'm looking at two more crows over there three more there's like four ducks over here you would never get anywhere if everything was a sign from the gods the other side of this at least for me personally is there was a lot of signs i missed because i wasn't paying attention because i wasn't looking at the natural world and the secret to this really is just being honest with yourself about the experiences you have you can't just look at every single crow and think it's a sign from Odin, but you also have to recognize when you do see a crow in a very peculiar way and it makes you feel a very certain way that it may very well be a sign from the gods. So my name is Jacob and I'm a Norse pagan and today in this video we'll be talking about how to interpret signs from the gods. Literally as I stop filming, look at these adorable little ducklings. Where's your mother? Is that your mother? I don't even know what these are. These ducks. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. Look at them. Go in the water, friends. Oh my gosh. Sometimes nature is just cute too. So there is actually a reason that I came here specifically to the English Gardens in Munich to film this video. And that is because there are so many birds here of so many different types. There are geese everywhere. There are crow everywhere. There's magpie and some birds I can't even explain. These don't even look like geese from the United States, but they're still geese. Regardless, if you're walking through a park that you know there's a lot of birds, if there's a lot of crows and you see one, the chances are it's probably not a sign from the gods. Now it could be. You just need to be honest with yourself. The way I think we should look at it is nature doesn't bend to our will. Yes, occasionally in the idea that is a sign from the God, the God would send something to you to show you that they want your attention, that they're listening or something like that, or you need to pay attention to something. But otherwise, nature doesn't just bend to the will of man. We're, it's an animistic faith. We live in unity with all that is around us. So to think that all of these geese are here because of me, is a very selfish mindset. And so think about it like that, like nature does not bend to our will. Now, sometimes it can send us messages, but we are not the lords of all. That is one of the beautiful parts about this faith is that we don't think we're above the natural world. And so when we're walking among places like this with the geese, dodging their poop, we're living in harmony with them. That's the goal. Now, let's say a goose lands on top of your car and stares at you. That might be a sign from the gods. So like with most videos, I wanna begin with what we know historically. Is there any evidence within the past, within any writings or artifacts that show us signs and omens were really that important to the people of the pre-Christian Scandinavian and Germanic past? We do have a little bit of information from Germania um, that Tacitus wrote during the time of Rome. Now, as always with Germania, this is a second-hand account. He didn't technically see these things for himself, but it's really one of the only accounts we have of Germanic practices um, really in this amount of depth as well. So I do apologize. I am reading this on my Kindle. Um, I don't have my library with me, so I've been having to find ways to be creative and, uh, and get these books otherwise. So in his description of the Germanic people, he says, no people are more addicted to divination by omens and lots. And then it goes into one of the few accounts we have of divination being used. Now it doesn't mention the rune specifically, it mentions cutting up a twig um, and using that for divination. But after describing how they do this, it says, if the result prove unfavorable, there is no more uh, consolation on the same affair that day. If it is a good reading, a confirmation by omens is still required. 
It goes on to say, in common with other nations, Germans are acquainted with the practice of arguing from notes and the flight of birds. Now, it also goes on to feature other ways they divinate, including using prisoners and horses drawn by chariots, um, but really this is all we get as far as the signs. We also know from Germania later on that uh, prophecies, omens, and things like that were taken very seriously, and women were often, often considered the most holy and most sacred and divine beings within pre-Christian Germanic society. Now, sadly, the other historical account I have, at least written down in a book, I do not have with me. This is a book called Myths and Simples in Pagan Europe by H.R. Ellis Davison. If you haven't already, I do highly recommend it. It's one of the most inspirational novels I've read through in the most well-researched books. Um, but it's also very condensed on pre-Christian Scandinavian and Germanic religion because it draws from Celtic, Germanic, and Norse beliefs to give us a better picture of what these practices would have been. Once again, I do apologize, I can't actually show you the exact passage or read it to you, um, but it, I trust me, it is in there, um, and this is where I'm pulling this from, uh, obviously not in exact detail. Um, I did look on Kindle, it's not available, or I couldn't find a PDF version. Um, but it does talk about how a woman in Iceland had a dream about a family spirit that came to her and told her that her, I believe, one of her family members died um, in Norway, and then she found out some days later that yes, her family member had died, and so she received this message in a vision beforehand. Um, so it, again, very small account, but it's interesting to see that this idea of spirits being able to visit us in our dreams and tell us of things that do become true, give us a slight amount of a prophecy, does exist historically, or at least within one tale. Um, and I, I, you know, and again, I don't have the exact information for you, but this is something I have seen before that dreams and what happened in dreams was considered important to the Germanic and Scandinavian people before the time of Christ. From what I could tell from, again, my limited amount of research I can do here, this is what historically we do know about divination and signs, is that it seems like they were highly regarded and that they were seen as important. Um, now, this is really helpful because otherwise we would say, like, are signs really that helpful? Are signs legitimate? And I think that's something that um, people coming to this video, people coming to this faith for the first time, have a question about. Are signs legitimate? Are we just making them up? Are we seeing what we want to see? But from what we can tell historically is that signs have been seen as important all the way back to the pre-Christian, Germanic, and Scandinavian times. I want to take a brief pause from today's video to discuss something that is really inspiring to me and also kind of sad is the fact that yes Germany was converted um, before the Viking Age really between 600 and 800 CE was really the conversion window of paganism within the German region but you see a lot of things that f to me feel like they still come from that pagan time um, things like this right here in front of me so this was built in 1724 I can read nothing else on it and it appears to have a figure of a woman here at the top um, it could be a monument to somebody, to a king. I mean, 1724, most people weren't building personal monuments, especially in places like a park. So it's hard to say. I really don't know what this is. But imagine if this was still a pagan thing, if, if Germany was never converted. Things like this would probably be all over the place just to deities. You know, maybe a small statue to Freya here or just a monument to ancestors. I mean, you have this big old tree next to it as well. Um, so it's sad because I, I wish, I mean, obviously any of us probably wish that paganism lived on, um, you know, more successfully into our modern age because I do wonder, as many wonder, what the world would be like today. Honestly, probably chaos. Um, but still, I, it's a hope for the future, a hope for the future that I see more things like this um, within my lifetime that are devoted to pagan subjects. You know, I would love to build things like this so people could come and just give offerings once again in peace. Before filming this video, I actually did put a poll out on Instagram to hear what signs people saw the most in this faith, at least today. And within this video today, I really want to talk about the most common signs people have seen um, to really kind of cover this subject as best I can. So number one, and unsurprisingly, is birds. Typically, crows, ravens, or hawks seem to be the biggest ones people generally see. Obviously, crows and ravens um, being with Odin, and then even hawks being with Freya. Um, this is something I've experienced in my own path as well, and we can see why. I mean, Odin's ravens are one of the most recognizable features about him. And so it makes sense that Odin's ravens who travel the world to bring back information to Odin would be a messenger for him. Uh, but also, just like I said in the beginning of this video, just be honest with yourself when you have those experiences. 
Now Freya, I've had this experience as well in a video I've actually made, I think it was almost a year ago now, where I had my first Freya experience. I saw either a hawk or a falcon actually take up a squirrel into a tree, um, and this was actually the first time I had a connection with Freya. Now, this kind of stuff happens all the time. Somewhere in the world, a falcon or a hawk just swooped up another squirrel into a tree. So what makes that a sign? I think it's because we have to think, who is the viewer? I mean, the whole saying of like, if a tree falls in the woods, does it really make a noise if no one's there to witness it? Same thing with these moments. You know, these are brief second moments that you have been given the privilege to see. And I think that's what makes it special to us is that we see these very unique moments um, and these very small moments of life that really make it amazing. I mean, think about uh, like National Geographic or any kind of documentary made about nature. They're capturing these very specific moments um, and usually they sit there probably for hours waiting for something to happen. And the moment something happens in nature, it's so quick that you know you blink and you miss it kind of thing. So I, I really do think that's why we see it as a sign when we are allowed the chance to see these things. And so, um, you know, the most memorable experience for me, at least having a raven, like an actual raven involved, not just a crow, um, is when I actually got this tattoo in Colorado. I was there to see the Wardruna concerts. They're already a really exciting experience. And then, you know, I went to go get this tattoo. I think it was right after the show. And um, right after we got done, we went outside to smoke a cigarette. And as soon as we opened the door, me and the tattoo artist walked out and I hear like that whoop, whoop. And I looked to my right, and that is when I saw my first true raven, my Colorado raven. I mean, its wingspan was massive, and then it like fluttered its wings and flew away into the distance. And to me, that was an approval of the tattoo, to, so to speak. Um, and so, you know, that was always a special moment to me. That is the key phrase, though. Visions and signs are for you. And one of the, my problems with a lot of things, and especially as we move into the dream conversation and visions, is when we use our signs and our personal experiences to gain an edge on a conversation, to gain an edge on, our, on an argument. You say, well, I received a sign from Odin, or oh, I had a dream from Freya. To me, this is a dishonorable use of the signs and visions we're given. These are very personal things. And so that's why it's been troublesome for me to talk about this, because ultimately it is up to you whether something is a sign or not, which can sound like a fairy tale or a fantasy, but that really is how it works. Now, obviously in the pre-Christian Germanic and Scandinavian times, this was seen quite differently. They were, you know, seen as, you know, an active part of society, um, but it was also much more trusted than <laughs> Was that a sign? So I have absolutely no way to prove this to you, but I literally just filmed an entire segment after the trumpet thing. I said something along the lines, oh, I took that as a sign I shouldn't film there, so I moved locations. And then I came here and did a whole segment on birds, on historical things, and how you should trust your gut, blah, blah, blah. And then like a fly flew in front of my face and like some people would take this as Loki, ha, ha, ha. And then my camera shut off and I lost everything. So I honestly don't know. To me, that was, I don't even know what that means, but it feels very peculiar. Again, maybe my camera just shut off. Like, I don't know why it's working now. I thought the memory was full, but it seems to be working. Um, you know, I don't know. But when all these variables come together, fly in my face, camera shuts off, it makes you think. And that's really the best thing I can say in this video is that you really have to study it yourself and be honest with yourself. And I think the best thing I said in the clip that is now lost forever into the ether is that when you see something in the woods, when you come to me and you say, I saw a rune in the trees, I saw Anzus, what do you think that means? I could of course give you my interpretation of what that means. But you know, that's not being fair to you because if you felt something in that moment, if you felt like you saw Anzus in the trees and you know Anzus means wisdom, then maybe you already know the answer and you're just seeking validation. And I think that's the biggest thing is that we think we're crazy when we get into this path, when we start having these moments, when you start seeing ravens and you start seeing runes in the trees, you feel crazy. And so you seek that validation from others. You seek validation from other practitioners, other people in the community. But the biggest thing, the biggest piece of advice I can give you is trust yourself. You know, don't think everything is a sign, but when you see something that you really know deep down into your gut that it is a sign, then it is to you. And that is what truly matters. A brief break to talk about my YouTuber due diligence. Please make sure you're liked and subscribed and all that YouTuber nonsense I have to say that is important. If you enjoy 
the wisdom of Odin even more, and you love watching me jump across massive rivers, please think about donating to Patreon. It's the only way I'm able to do this full time, and I make sure there's plenty of benefits for you as well, including our community Discord and early access videos. I will also probably put the bloopers from today's video because there has been so many of them. So if you wanna see those bloopers and wanna support me at the same time, please think about going to Patreon to do so. Otherwise, back to today's video. Ooh. I do want to make sure I cover the other things that were brought up in that Instagram poll as well. Um, things that were lost in that deleted video, but the second thing brought up in connection with birds, very similar, is thunderstorms or other natural elements such as that. Um, these natural elements definitely seem to be something that people connect with very often, um, even signs from the gods, um, little ducks that just go, I don't know what those are. But yes, thunderstorms definitely seem to be something people connect to very obviously with Thor. Not every single deity has these natural elements that are easy to kind of interpret, but many of them do. I mean, things like Freyr, and I've even heard like Idun have connections to rain um, because of like fertility and things like that. But this is definitely when we start losing the historical context and we start pulling in people's personal experiences. You know, when a hundred people say, hey, when I see a dove, I feel, you know, frig then maybe those hundred people can convince someone else, you know what, maybe doves do connect with Frigg. And I think this is where you get into the UPG versus VPG thing, where it's like something that just kind of happened to you is your unverified personal noses. And then when you have a VPG, which is a verified personal noses, where a bunch of people have had a similar experience, that's really what we dive into when it comes to signs, is you hear a bunch of people or a group of people have had similar experiences by seeing something. Therefore, when you see it, you feel that connection as well. And I mean, again, I just wanna make sure we draw that line historically Historically, yes, we know signs were a thing, we know signs were important, but when it comes to specific details on signs, that's when we really are just going off of personal experiences. Having said that, I want to make sure that we talk about the other things people have brought up, specifically things like thunderstorms being connected to Thor. This is something that we can definitely derive from history um, and just from personal practices. It seems like, you know, Thor is tied to thunder, and so when you hear it, you can feel connected to him. But just with like the birds, it doesn't mean every thunderstorm is Thor, not every crash of thunder or lightning is necessarily for you, but if you feel connected to it, it most likely is for you. Just again, be honest about those personal experiences. Don't expect every thunderstorm to bend to your will, nor be there for a sign for you. But occasionally they can be there for you for a moment with you and Thor. And that's why I think it's important when you are feeling disconnected to the gods, things like thunderstorms are great because anytime you go out and you pour a beer out for Thor and you drink with him, I really think you're gonna have an amazing experience. Another element that was brought up is something I, I've mentioned briefly in this video so far is runes. Now, this is definitely things we don't know historically. We barely understand the runes historically in the first place. From what we can tell historically, the runes really just were an alphabet. Now, we know the runes existed. Um, the alphabet runes existed at the same time as divination and lots and things like that. And obviously, you have the mentioning of the runes and the have them all and things like that. So we, we can kind of infer that the runes were used for divination, but the actual specific purposes of each rune is kind of lost to us and this is something that has been you know gathered by multiple individuals over the past few hundred years and again I have several I have several videos on the runes if you want to check those out but as far as what the runes mean in signs really this is definitely up to you it's not something I really look too deeply in I mean shoot even today I saw a thurizaz or what I interpreted as a thurizaz in the form of a twig on the side of a lake now, did that mean anything to me? Did I have an experience with it? No. I mean, it was kind of cool, like almost like an eye spy, like, hey, I found the rune in nature. You know, seeing runes in nature is cool. But as far as signs from the gods, I don't personally put much weight about, uh, I don't personally put much weight behind it. Some people do, but historically we really can't tell this was something that was important to the pre-Christian Scandinavian and Germanic people. And maybe it could have been, but it just never was recorded. Again, something we've kind of touched on a little bit in this video so far is something else people have brought up, and that is dreams slash visions. And this is definitely where honesty is very important. When you have these dreams or visions, you know, they really are for you. And I, I have personally had dreams that I would consider visions because they were so in depth. I mean, it's something that it really felt like I was waking up from another life. Um, and this is definitely, again, this is something that's really hard to talk about because for me, visions are for you, are, are personal. And so when you start sharing them with others, it can sound arrogant or selfish because you're saying, oh, well, the, the gods visited me in a dream. You know, I'm special. 
I mean, you know, that's what it comes off to me. And I, I feel like that's how it would come off if I talked about my dreams or visions of the gods. So I keep those for myself. I mean, they, you know, the gods choose to visit you. And so therefore it's for you, not necessarily for everyone else to hear. Um, now, obviously we had that historical story of someone hearing about a family member dying. And so, you know, certain visions and dreams can come to you like that. And that's really up to you to interpret. I mean, I had a dream about my grandfather dying, you know, a month ago. But he's fine you know it's not like it's happened now will my grandfather die eventually of course and you know and that's something in my subconscious i'm worried about i don't want my grandfather to die you know typically we don't mo want most of our family to die or our loved ones and so having dreams slash nightmares about family members dying can be really complicated when you're a pagan because you take it as a vision just because you have a dream that is very traumatic and very real doesn't necessarily make it a vision Again, this is just something that is, is really hard to talk about and you really just need to go throughout the faith, go, out, go throughout this and have these experiences, have those traumatic dreams at the same time of having an actual vision and knowing the difference. It's really hard for me to, to tell you what is different about them. I think the biggest problem for me when it comes to dreams and visions is defining what makes them different. What makes a dream, a fantasy, you know, just something you see at night, a dream. And what turns that into a vision when it's so real that you feel like it's a sign from the gods, from the spirits, from the ancestors? And that's, you know, it's a really hard definition because again, it, it's a personal experience. And I think it's really up to you to define the difference. Um, you know, I've had, you know, hundreds of sleeps since becoming a pagan and hundreds of dreams. But what makes those dreams over here and what makes those three visions that I personally experienced visions, you know, and that's something that I've just had to go through myself. Um, you know, I've had very fantastical dreams about, you know, drinking with the gods or seeing, you know, Thor in the skies, but I know they're dreams. I'm just honest with myself about those experiences. Um, I've heard some pretty crazy stories from people in this community um, about, you know, especially from people that first start, you know, they really start consuming the content. They start reading the mythology. They start watching Vikings. Um, they start listening to War Druna. And then all of a sudden they start having these dreams and they start seeing things like the gods or Fenrir, uh, which is uh, often common one. People see Fenrir in a dream and they automatically think that means they need to start worshiping Fenrir. Uh, this is something we're going to talk in about in a podcast very soon um, because it's something that is becoming almost a problem is I think a lot of people are having these fantasy dreams and aren't being honest with themselves about them not being, you know, real experiences. But again, this is something that makes this so complicated. I don't want to devalidate somebody who really thinks that they have had a vision, an honest vision. You know, again, just be honest with yourself. But I also don't want people to think by watching this video that every dream they have, every time they see the gods in a dream, that makes it a vision. You know, it's a very fine line. Again, biggest thing about this video is personal honesty, um, but also not imposing those things on other people, which is something I touched on earlier um, just a little bit. And I, I really do think that's a problem in the community that we could face is uh, when people say, no, this was a vision. You know, I had a vision from Odin. He told me this and there's no other way and you can't deny it because it's mine. It's my vision. I mean, visions are your own. Visions are for you, but don't impose and make other people believe you, you know? Um, you know, like I said, I've had visions, but I've not really talked about them. I think I made an Instagram post once and I'm not like shaking people like, you need to believe me, believe me. Like, how dare you devalidate my experiences? Like, be honest, be respectful and be kind with what the gods give you. If they choose to give you a moment of their time in a vision or a dream, Honor and respect that and, and don't weaponize that against other people. Um, but just enjoy this faith. Go through the motions. Go through the steps. And throughout your experiences, throughout the years, through the months and the days and the many dreams, you will learn what really is a vision and what just is a fantasy. Um, and that's really the best way I can end this video on dreams, on visions, on signs. But thank you for joining me for this video and through the hijinks of all that has happened. I hope you've enjoyed the funny moments. I hope I've been able to share this topic well. It's something that I've wanted to talk about for a while because it's a question I get a lot. Um, but there is so many different variables to, to consider. The historical, the, the modern, the personal experiences, the honesty. I mean, there's so much wrapped into this subject. So I hope I've been able to encapsulate it well in this video. Uh, but ultimately, I don't want to say it again. Just be honest with yourself. Be respectful of other people's practices um, and don't impose your views on specific things on other people. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. And until next time, and until the hall, skull. 
My name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And today, I want to talk about those golden geese flying above me.